Welcome to another installment of the Riot.js and Redux video series. If you haven't been following along, it will probably be much easier to start at the beginning since each video builds on where the previous video left off. And remember, to get up to speed on Redux itself, you really can't beat the Egghead IO videos by Redux's creator, Dan Abramov. So far, everything we've done has been synchronous, and that was great for getting familiar with how to get the Redux store wired up with our view, but in a real application, we're gonna to need to make asynchronous calls to deal with APIs on our server. And that's what the rest of the series is gonna focus on. We'll be picking up where the last video left off, but we'll be expanding our example beyond a single form input and an output. So let's remove the previous tags from our index.html and clean up some of the code around those tags so that we can focus on the new functionality. So to start off, I'm going to go ahead and close the title form tag and the sample output tag files. We won't be looking at those anymore. I'm going to go into index.html and we're going to take title form, the HR and our sample output, and we're going to remove those. And then in index.js, we're not going to need these two require statements anymore. So we'll take those out. And then in our reducer, we can remove the case for change title. And uh, we can go into actions.js and we can remove the exports for change title and the change title action creator. Now that the cleanup's done, we're gonna need to install a couple more NPM modules. The first one we're gonna install is the Redux Thunk middleware. And what this is gonna do is give us the ability to create action creators that instead of just returning a static object, they can return a function. And that function is gonna be the key to allowing us to let Redux continue to run in a synchronous manner while we do asynchronous work within the function that those action creators are gonna return. And we'll see how this all works once we get everything installed and set up. So let's go into our terminal and I still have the Webpack dev server running. So I'm just gonna clear that out and we're gonna npm install with the save flag, redux-thunk. And so we can focus on the front end Riot and Redux code, and we don't have to worry about setting up our own backend server with Express or HappyJS or something like that. We're gonna install another NPM package called JSON server, and we're gonna install that globally. And what JSON server is going to do is give us a, a service with endpoints that we can hit based on a, a static JSON file. And so we can create that file, save it in our project, set up our test data. Um, and the great thing about this is we don't have to do any real setup other than creating the file, but we can hit it with get requests and get data back. We can also post, put, delete, pretty much anything you could do with a regular service. And it's just going to update the file. So great little utility when you're, you know, working on something front end, you need to fake your backend services. So that's done installing. I'll go ahead and clear that out. And we're going to create a file called db.json. And now that we have this file, we're going to go ahead and add some JSON to act as our backend data. So we're going to create the old reliable task application so that again, rather than focusing on the details of the application, we can keep our focus on the Riot and Redux parts. So make sure db.json is saved and we're gonna go back into our terminal and we're gonna go ahead and start up the server for that. So I'm gonna do that by typing in json-server and the name of our file. And when we run this, We'll see that this is running at localhost port 3000 and it's showing us that we have a resource called tasks in this path. So if I take this path and I open another terminal window, I should be able to curl a get request to that tasks resource endpoint and it'll return that tasks array. So we know our API is going to respond when we pass it a get request and that's all we need for now. So let's go ahead and clear that out. And we killed the webpack dev server. So I'm gonna run that again with my npm run dev command. We have a valid bundle. So we can go ahead and get started with the new code. 
In the index.js file, we want to add a require statement to pull in that Redux thunk module. And because we've introduced this Redux middleware, we're going to have to make some updates to our create store functionality that we have down here. So I'll comment out the old one so we have it as a reference for now. And we're going to create a new variable, create store with middleware. And this is going to be set to equal redux.compose, which is going to take our middleware and it's going to result in a function. And in that compose function, we want to call Redux's apply middleware method and we'll pass it in thunk. Redux compose returns a function and that function takes Redux's create store function. And that combination in turn returns yet another function. And that's what create store with middleware is going to be. So it's going to be the resulting function from this entire operation. So then we can call that with our reducer and we'll get our Redux store. In our previous examples, we looked at uh, the Redux store's three methods. We have get state, dispatch, and subscribe. And we use subscribe to get our tags to update anytime there was a state change. Well, in this new application, we're going to use multiple tags, and those are all going to need to respond to state updates. So rather than having to put this code in every single tag, we're going to build this new application with the concept of a parent container tag. And the parent container tag is going to contain all of the other tags that make up our application, and it's going to be responsible for responding to state updates and making sure that all of its child tags get updated. So let's create that tag now. So I'm going to create a tag in the tags folder, and I'm going to call it to do-app.tag. And I'm going to give it its root tags, and it's also going to need a set of script tags. I know I'm going to need some actions in my to-do app tag, so I'm going to add the require statement that pulls in the actions.js file. And I'm also going to create a variable for the store, which is going to be passed into this tag through the options. And then I'm going to add my call to store.subscribe so that I can respond to state updates. Anytime the state changes, I want to take that new state and assign it to a variable within my tag. So I'm going to assign this.state to equal store.getState. And any state update is going to require that the tag updates. So I'll add a call to this.update. And in order for both of those this references to work properly, I'm going to bind that function to this. So at this point, anytime the state updates, subscribe will get triggered. I'll call store.getState to get the newest version of the state. I'll assign it into this local state variable, and I'll update the tag. And that update is going to cause this tag and any tags that are referenced inside of it to update. So that's going to push those state updates all the way through our entire application. And the first thing our tag needs is a tag to render out our tasks that are coming from that fake API that we set up. And we're going to want to display that inside the to do app tag. So I'm going to add this task list tag into the body here. And our task list tag is going to take the tasks that it needs to display through an attribute. And again, this attribute is going to be available within task list on the ops object. And we're going to pass it an expression. And in that expression, we want to make a call to this.state, which we're assigning the entire state down in subscribe. And we're going to call a tasks property on that state. So when we get that updated state, that'll get assigned to state down here. And that state is ultimately going to have a property on it called tasks that'll contain the list that we got from our API call. Now that we have the task list tags set up, let's go and create that file. So in the tags directory, I'll create a new file called tasklist.tag. And just like any other tag, we'll go ahead and add the root tags first. And inside there, we want to set up a UL, which in turn is going to contain an LI. And we're going to give that LI in each statement. And if you remember from previous videos, this is how Riot handles loops. And we're going to say for each task in the tasks that were passed in in the options, we want to create a new li element. And for now, let's just give that some text. So we'll take the name of the task and we'll drop that inside the li. So at this point, we have a container tag 
that's set up to handle changes in our state. And we have our task list tag that's going to display our tasks. We have our fake API set up. So now we need the action creator set up so that we can make that async call to get those tasks from the server. So we're going to go into actions.js and we're going to create a function called load tasks. And that function is going to return a function. Okay. And this is where the Redux thunk middleware comes into play. And this function that we're returning, is going to get passed in the dispatch and get state methods from our store. Inside that function, we can make our XHR request. So we'll request that open and we want to make a get request to that localhost 3000 slash tasks that we looked at earlier. And then we're going to need to handle the result of that through the request.onload function. And we want to send the request. So in the onload, I'm going to add an if statement. And this way we only respond to valid or, you know, successful status codes. We want to take that request text and we want to parse the JSON and assign it to a variable called data. And now we want to make a call to dispatch, which we got passed in by Redux. And we want to call tasks loaded with our data value. Tasks loaded is an action creator that we still need to create. So let's go ahead and create that now. So we'll create the empty function tasks loaded, and that's going to take our tasks array. And we want to return an action object from this one. And we'll give it a type tasks loaded, and we'll pass it in a data property with the value tasks. And we're going to need to be able to call load tasks from outside of our actions.js file. So we're going to expose that in the module.export statement at the top of our file. And now let's go update our reducer to handle this. The first thing I want to do is update my default state where I have the old title default title. I want to update that to be tasks with an empty array. So our starting state is going to be an empty set of tasks. Now we can add the case for our action creator that return tasks loaded. And then of course we need to handle that. So we're going to, just like we did before, we're going to use object at assign to take our existing state and any new properties for that state merge them into a new object and return that from our reducer. And now to make sure all of this will work, we need to do some plumbing. So we want to add require statements for our tags right here in index.js. And in our call to riot.mount, we're going to update that catch all and we're just going to mount the to do app tag directly. And then in our index.html file, we need to add our to do app tag. And now we're going to go into our to do app tag, I want to add a call to the tags mount event and I'll give that an anonymous function. And in this function, I want to make a call to store.dispatch and I want to call my asynchronous action creator load tasks. So this is going to kick off the whole process. So when this tag mounts, actions.load tasks will be called. It'll return a function. Internally, that function is going to make our XHR request. And when that is done, it's going to dispatch our other action that's going to go into the reducer. It's going to replace our empty list of tasks with the ones from the API. And we should see the tasks loaded on the page. So let's go to our browser and check that out. And if everything's wired up properly, we should see these two values displayed. So we're loading this data from the JSON server node module. It's running locally, so it's super fast. But if there was some kind of delay due to network bottleneck or the server being slow for some reason, we want to indicate that the data is loading and not have it just sit there with an empty task list and then suddenly have the tasks appear. So let's go ahead and set up an artificial delay using a set timeout so that we can test out and incorporate a loading indicator. So I'm going to go into actions.js where we're making our XHR request and I'm going to wrap the request.send in a set timeout with a delay of two seconds. So now if we go back to the browser and refresh, the page will sit there blank for about two seconds and then our tasks appear. So now we have a sufficient delay to test against to set up our indicator. All right, so the first thing I want to do is in my tags directory, I'm going to add a file for my loading indicator called loading indicator.tag, and we'll give loading indicator its root tags, loading dash indicator. And I just want to add a simple animated GIF, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that from my file system and add it to the project. So we'll see here I have loading.gif, and it's just a little spinner. 
And in my loading indicator tag, I can add an image source and I can have it point to loading.gif. And the next thing we need to do is decide if we're gonna show this. So we're gonna add a show attribute. And again, this is one of Riot's built-in attributes. And we'll pass that an expression. And that expression is gonna be dependent on a loading flag that we'll pass in as an attribute of the loading indicator tag. So we'll access that through this.ops. And now that we have our tag set up, we'll go back into index.js and we want to add a require for this. And we'll go into our container tag to do app. And we'll go ahead and we'll add that tag, loading indicator. And again, loading indicator is going to rely on a loading flag passed in as an attribute. So we'll pass in loading with an expression. And we're going to reference this.state.isLoading. And at this point, this property doesn't exist on our state. So one, we need to go create it. And two, by default, this will just result to a falsy value. So our loading indicator will just remain hidden. But we do want to be able to show it. So let's go into our actions file. And in actions.js, we're going to add a new function called toggle loading. And toggle loading is going to take an is loading argument. And toggle loading is going to return an object with a type toggle loading and a data value of is loading. So now we need to go into our reducer and handle this action. So back in index.js, we'll add a case for toggle loading. And in that case, we're going to use our object.assign again. And we're going to take the existing state with an updated is loading property. And we're going to use the action.data value for that and return that new state. And now I'm going to go back to actions.js and in our load tasks function, we're going to make a call to dispatch with the toggle loading, passing it a value of true at the very beginning of our function that does our XHR call. And at this point, if we go back to our browser and we refresh, we should see our loading indicator and then our delay ends and our tasks load, but our loading indicator just sits there. So let's go back into our code and fix that. So in our on load handler, we're going to make another call to dispatch with toggle loading and we're going to pass it false. And now if we go back to our browser, refresh, show the indicator, delay ends, we get our tasks and it hides our loading indicator. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and be sure to keep an eye out for the next video in the series.